The Linux desktop in the year 2025 is no longer just a thing for programmers or tech enthusiasts, but rather something that almost anyone can install and use on their device. Sure, it might have some quirks here and there if you just blindly follow everyone's advice. But in reality, Linux runs really well on a lot of devices. In today's video, we are going to talk about some questions that a new user might have once they switched over to Linux, how stuff like audio and familiar navigation options can be restored, and ultimately, how it holds up to Windows in general. And let's get straight into it. One tip that I can give you straight away is that if you want to connect to a NAS, a network share like it's often used in companies, or just integrate some cloud functionality into your desktop, then I personally recommend the GNOME desktop environment or at least one that was initially based off of it. How do you know that? Well, it's either advertised on the distribution's website, but also a quick search lets you know if that's the case. The reason on why I'm bringing this up is because not every desktop environment has put the same amount of effort into mounting these network shares. One of the most popular desktop environments that is often being recommended and also powering the desktop mode of the Steam Deck is KDE Plasma. And while it's really good in terms of customization, performance and overall usability, it just lacks in functionality for this particular use case. By default, KDE Plasma does not mount shares in the traditional path like GNOME does with its implementation. You can think of it like GNOME is doing it like Windows with drive letters, and KDE Plasma is doing it like Windows if you only use the add network location. Both mount the share just fine and you can access it, but if a special application has their own file browser or are just using a different version, then like on Windows, the share might not be accessible. Now, on some more modern distributions like Fedora, they actually do have a fix for that in place, since they include a dependency that mimics GNOME's behavior. However, it's not reliable across restarts, since by default it changes the names, making it really annoying to remap the share every single time. So network shares are better connected than something GNOME-based, or at least a file browser that supports it like that. Next up, partitioning and resizing disks. A common use case, especially on desktop PCs, is that you add more drives into your system as your storage requirements grow. On Windows, once you added a new drive, you can easily format it via the disk management tool. However, on Linux, you often just find some confusing terminal commands. But not to worry, it actually doesn't have to be that difficult. Most desktop environments and distributions come with some sort of graphical disk utility pre-installed. You can use them to initialize the disk, format it with different file systems that can be read either exclusively by Linux or Windows as well. Furthermore, you can edit the partition and change its behavior to always auto-mount itself. In contrast to other operating systems, this is deactivated by default on Linux as a security measure. However, with a quick toggle, it will now do it automatically as soon as your system starts up. You can also use it to resize a partition. For example, if you want to make space for a dual boot installation, encrypt it out of the box or create a virtual image of it for later use. One more detail that's lesser known, it can also be used to flash ISO and image files directly to storage devices like a USB stick, which is also quite handy. Let's talk about audio. One thing that is unfortunately often neglected by desktop environments is audio control. Especially if your headset or speakers are just too quiet, you have a fully fledged surround sound system, or the outputs are just getting sent to the wrong device, for example a microphone. In that case, one tool that can help you with that is Pavo control. Just search it in your software center and you should find it. It's a more or less extension of the limited audio settings of your desktop environment, allowing you to make finer adjustments like boosting the sound past the thresholds, changing the balance, enabling true surround technologies if your devices are actually surround sound capable, not just software control to this, and like I mentioned earlier, you can do a little bit of routing if for some reason your sound gets sent to the wrong device. If you want to add effects similar to proprietary software on Windows, Easy Effects is a good choice. However, that's a topic that I've already covered in a different video, so definitely make sure to check it out. One feature that often throws new users off once they switch to Linux is that the middle click on your mouse does not trigger an auto-scroll feature like on Windows, but rather just pastes text that you've selected previously. And while this sort of experience is appreciated by many, not everyone likes it. So how can you make it like on Windows? Well, KD Plasma has already implemented initial support for supporting auto-scroll on, well, scrollable surfaces. But not every desktop environment has this yet. 
On those, many applications are capable to enable it on their own. Firefox does have a toggle in its settings. Chromium-based browsers like Google Chrome, Edge and Brave have a so-called flag, which you need to enable via the custom flag URL. And other desktop applications also often include some version of it, if you prefer it. And just like that, you get a bit of familiarity back. Let's talk about extensions and advanced customizations. Linux desktop environments are different from one another and don't always support all the features from one or the other, like the thing with the network shares, for example. So what if you want to use GNOME's implementation but just like the aesthetics and feel of KDE Plasma? Well, in that case, you might want to start looking at extensions and the other way around KWIN scripts to bridge some of the gaps between functionalities. On GNOME and its derivatives, extensions can add desktop icons, a classic taskbar, maybe a fancy dock or aesthetic improvements. Despite not being all that customizable out of the box, you can often shape a desktop environment into a different experience just by utilizing them. On the other hand, KDE Plasma, despite being much more customizable, is lacking some of the features that make people like GNOME so much, like dynamic workspaces or keeping one monitor static. In that case, just like with extensions on GNOME, you can use KWIN scripts to alter KDE Plasma into a different experience, even slightly into a tiling window manager. And last but not least, what about keeping your PC's data safe, especially if you're afraid that you break it with all of that customization? Well, both TimeShift and DejaDupe are great options to back up your profile or even hold system configuration to a different drive, cloud storage or network share, which makes it really easy to just simply undo your changes if you break it. And those were just some tips and tricks on how you can better utilize your Linux desktop. And I really hope that there was at least one new point in there for you to use. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, then please make sure to show it with a like. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. And I really hope that you cannot wait to watch the next video. But in the meantime, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.